I'm with uh, Dr. Jones. It would be a bit hard for me to to express myself because it's not my it's my third language because my first lang- language is Albanian. Tell me what your second language is. So my my second second language is Italian, and they see us like like monsters because in television and everything they portray Albanians like uh, these monsters, these thieves that only. Uh, went and, and did bad things uh, uh, to, to to poor Italians. Uh. Yeah, you, you, if if you want to understand this, you have to understand the big picture here, and the big the big picture uh, with in Europe and Italy, in particular, is the loss of faith, loss of Catholic faith. This happened over a period of uh, ever since World War II. It's largely the result of United States imperialism. If you want historical background for Italy, uh, I recommend uh, a film by Federico Fellini called La Dolce Vita. Yes. This film came out in 1960, uh, which is the same year that Cardinal Ottaviani called the Second Vatican Council for the Catholic Church. So I think that both Ottaviani and Fellini are reacting to the same problem. And the problem here is America. It's the United States of America and its influence on traditional Italian culture had a huge influence. So you have the uh, the image of uh, the conflict in the movie between uh, uh, Marcello Mastroianni plays a journalist and he's got an Italian girlfriend. And the Italian girlfriend looks Italian, you know, and uh, she's going to, she wants to become his wife and she wants to cook pasta for him. (laughs) Because that's what your Italian wife does. She cooks pasta and she creates a home for you. But he's a journalist and suddenly Anita Ekberg shows up. Anita Ekberg is a Swedish lady. She's a Swedish actress, uh, but she's got blonde hair and she's really... She's really Jane Mansfield. Jane Mansfield was a famous American actress who came to Italy because a lot of Americans came to Italy during this period of time because labor was cheaper in Italy than it was in Hollywood. And uh, Hollywood was in a position where they had to compete with television. And there were two ways they could compete with television. Nudity, okay, having a woman take off her clothes and huge spectacles, big movies that you couldn't put on a television screen. So movies like Ben-Hur, for example. And so uh, a lot of American influence came over to Italy. And here's Marcello, and he's looking at Anita Ekberg, and he kind of falls in love with Anita Ekberg. But he falls in love with the image of Anita Ekberg, which is the American movie star, the blonde American movie star with large breasts. So Anita Ekberg says at one point, uh, they're saying, the reporters are saying to Anita Ekberg, how did you get the role, Sylvia? And she says, she holds up her breast and she says, because I have a big talent. (laughs) (laughs) So this is what's what's going on. Now, in in a more serious vein, Cardinal Ottaviani is saying, seeing the same thing going on. Traditional Italian Catholic culture is being corrupted by American imperialism, cultural imperialism. And he wants to do something about it. So he calls the Second Vatican Council. And you can read about this in the the, uh, the documents of Vatican II, the preliminary documents which he wrote or were written under his supervision. And they warn about the American corruption of morals. Now, I just did an article. I just came back from Bavaria. I was in Bavaria in October. I gave a speech there. I lived in Germany. I speak fluent German. And I went hiking in the mountains. And suddenly I realized uh, Bavaria was subject to the same type of pressure that Italy was, except it was much worse in Bavaria because they were Germans and uh, the United States wanted to punish the Germans for their role in World War II. They punished them more than they did the Italians, even though they were aligned with the Italians. Yes. So yes. What, what this is, what this was called, but this, the name of this, the name that you need to know is social engineering. Yes. No. Social engineering means we are going to secretly control your thoughts. 
Uh, it's also called psychological warfare. And it was imposed on Italy. And Italy did not know, the Catholic Church did not know what was going on because they thought that America was their friend. And why did they think America was their friend? Because America opposed communism. And so no, anybody no. who opposed communism naturally had to ally itself with America. So what happened in Italy and in Germany during the period of time that we're talking about? They had a, a large amount of economic prosperity, especially in Germany. And their moral, they lost their sexual morals. Their sexual morals were corrupted. This is precisely what Cardinal Ottaviani was worried about. This is precisely what Polini is talking about in La Dolce Vita. And this is exactly what happened. The, the Jewish social engineers, people like from the Frankfurt School, the American Jewish Committee, were appointed to be the controllers of Germany. Every single, every single magazine every single newspaper, every single film, every single play had to get a license from a Jewish psychiatrist from New York City in order to get published. That was the fact of life in Germany. And these people were determined to destroy the moral fiber of the people they had conquered through the use of sexual liberation. And I wrote a book on that called Libido dominante, sexual liberation, and political control. Okay. Yes. yes. So, and, so the point, the point, the point I'm trying to make here is that when the 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 first indication that you have there is no sexual morality left in your country is that people stop having children, and people stop having children. Uh, they have, if it's a powerful economy, they have to bring people in to work for them, and this is much more the case in Germany. But it was the case in both Italy and Germany. The birth rate plummeted. And as a result, uh, the, the country started to empty out. People were dying out. There's an empty space. The economy stalls. And in Germany, you have to bring people in. Now, I, in Italy, I'm not sure where they had to bring Albanians in to sweep the streets and do things like that. But I suspect that that's what happened. Yes. So, so there is this. there is going to be this natural resentment against, let, let's say, with just with Italy and Albanians. There's going to be a natural resentment against the Albanians because the Italians had to bring them in because they weren't reproducing. So this is an admission of failure on the part of the Italian people that we, are, we don't even have the power to reproduce. We don't have the power to have children. We are in a bad state, and we're going to blame the people that we brought in as as the source of the problem. Well, we are the source of the problem. That's my analysis of Italian Albanian relations. I see much uh, the similarities between communism and uh, what what we have today, democracy. You know, uh, and uh, the, uh, I see that this happens also here in Italy, which uh, should be a, a free country, uh, because as soon as you uh, start to take another path, or, or for whatever reason, you you start to see uh, to, to to search uh, for for news a, a little bit deeper than just watching television. You uh, become like like a virus, you know, as uh, as in the movie Mat Matrix, they the the agents uh, uh, find you. And uh, usually the, the agents are not paid by, by anyone because it starts from, from just here in your family that right. uh, the, the people that you have around you start to, to become enemies. I feel like I'm in, in the isolation, you know, when, when you are in prison and, and they, they put you in, the, in isolation, yeah? And uh, this, is, uh, this is how I feel now. And uh, you do, I don't know if you, you might... Uh, no, here in Rome there is a, a famous uh, prison called uh, Rebibia, and uh, and I and I, I live right next to, to the prison, you know. And uh, sometimes one in Trastevere. What is that in Trastevere? Ah, uh, no, th that one is uh, uh, I, I forgot the name right now, but it's another one which is uh, in Via Tiburtina, uh, and. Uh, 
it's it's where the the friend of uh, Berlusconi <laughs> is still here, uh, Marcello Dell'Utri, the the mafia uh, that had mafia connection and uh, and uh, you know it was he was friend of uh, of Berlusconi, you know. I don't know. Uh, I, of course, I, I wanted to talk also of this aspect of the mafia and how important it is here in Italy, because I think uh, uh, the, the way uh, the, in communism, for example, they uh, it, it was like the violence that they used to, to the people. It was overt. Uh, anybody could see that they, you know, grab you and put you to, to jail or 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 if you uh say in the streets for example you know we don't have anything to eat it, it was called like it, it was seen as as you were attacking uh, the party you know and, yeah. and so you could end up or killed or, or in uh, some prison uh, in, in the middle of the mountains you know people you know could see that uh, the system was very violent uh but here uh, the, they made it in a way that people do not understand that the system is also violent, this one, because they have put all the, the dirty job to, to some agents that, that are, for example, the mafia, uh, the, the banks that come and take your, your, your house, uh, the, the, the companies, all the, all the business, the, all the business that, that today, um, uh, people that make money through business, they usually are uh, helping to to forward this uh, this uh, what the system wants. So, it, in other words, I'm saying that they are using all, uh, all kinds of agents to to do the same thing that they did in communism. But uh, they say, uh, you know, there's pollution, but uh, you know, it's not us that are doing. Uh, we are fighting for this. You you can't uh, blame, for example, the system because they say, oh, you know, there uh, this guy that had uh, this company did this. Or for example, if the mafia kills uh, someone, uh, uh, for example, if people for, for example don't know that here in Italy we we we, we have this uh, coercion that the mafia does to to people, especially in the south, where there is what what, what they call here in Italian pizza which is like pizza, but with the O uh, uh, at the end, which is the, the, the mafia goes to to someone who, which has a shop, a, a business, and they say, if you want to, to live, you have to give me a portion of your profit every month, for example. No? And so uh, in this in indirect ways, the state still controls everything like before, and uh, you may think that uh, you are uh, you have a house, for example, but you have to pay a, a, a fee a tax every year, even though the, the house is yours. So, in in my opinion, the if you really analyze the system, uh, which says that that, that is free, uh, uh, the, it, it isn't true. And uh, and going back to what you were saying of uh, this uh, uh, deterioration of morals. Uh, during these years, I, I I saw this 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 thing that uh, uh, Albanian and, and Italians were the same morally, uh, but with like seventy years uh, uh, difference. And, uh, I mean, until communism lasted uh, in, in in Albania, the morals were were fine, but uh, here in Italy, the, the morals started to 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 the de, to degrade uh, during the 60s 50s 60s you know uh, and so uh, many times for example i see myself talking to old people and and being more uh more in line and uh, it's more uh, uh enjoying to talk with them instead of uh, people uh, of of my age i am 37 years old uh, communism for for Although it was bad and everything, uh, for some reason it, uh, it didn't, uh, you know, destroy the morals like uh, like they do it today. Uh, today it's without limits. That they they don't care. They they are doing it so so bluntly, so so rigorously, and so without uh, mercy that it is 
it's so obvious, but uh, at the same time, it's also covert because people watch what they tell them in television where, as you say, uh, uh, when you say uh, poor but sexy, you know, they, they show you that, that that you have only to enjoy yourself and uh, and uh, right. e even though you you don't have future you don't have money you don't have job you don't have the, the possibility possibility to make a family you have nothing uh, things that at least in, in communism at least you have you, you had the a house even though they decided uh, if they wanted to give it to you but at least you, you have a house you, you had the, a future at least you could make a family more or less, and then everything. And uh, today it's worse, but people think, in fact, in Albania, the people hate, if, if you talk uh, about communism in Albania, they, they, they almost jump at you and they almost want to kill you because uh, they, they have put in, in, they, in their head that today if they are much, much better and they, you know, thank all this... Uh, capitalism and everything you know where everything is so so good you know but if it really was good albanians would would return uh, back in in their in their in their land but right. they, don't, they don't do it they they we still live i live in italy even though i i'm not uh, loved here you know love uh, i don't mean people are mean to me but in, in some uh, in some way you feel it because sometimes for people it's hard even when you just change home and stay in the same country it's hard you know right. uh, imagine when you change a complete culture and everything it's very traumatic i understand this because i was subject to this myself uh when i was growing up in philadelphia after world war ii the big foundations like the ford foundation orchestrated a huge movement of the black population uh, from places in the South, the Southern United States, where these people were involved in agricultural labor, picking cotton and stuff like that, into the big cities of the North. The purpose of this was to destroy Catholic ethnic neighborhoods, which is where I lived as a child. The neighborhood, the parish I lived in was an Irish parish. It was in North Philadelphia. And in 1954, the black people uh, from South Carolina, North Carolina, crossed, started buying houses north of Lehigh Avenue in Philadelphia. And that created panic among the Irish, and they all moved out. And that was the end of the Irish ethnic neighborhood. Now, those people in that neighborhood consider themselves Irish, or in other neighborhoods, they consider themselves Italian or Polish. Uh, these are the main ethnic European ethnic groups. When they were driven out of their neighborhoods, they went to the suburbs. And at that point, they became white. They became white people, which is a, a way of saying they don't know who they are. They don't know where their roots are anymore. They don't speak Polish anymore. They intermarry. And, and this caused a, a crisis in the Catholic faith as well, because the ethnic parish and ethnic culture, Polish culture, whatever it was, was the vehicle where you whereby you transmitted the faith. That was the language that the people still spoke. So the point I'm trying to make here from your point of view is that the conflict as people perceived it during the 50s and 60s was perceived as black versus white. Well, I told my friend, uh, Lady uh, Cynthia McKinney, that I just met recently, she was a, a black uh, congressman from uh, Georgia, she was elected to the Congress of the United States, and she got run out of office because she refused to sign the pledge for IPAC, which is the Israel lobby in the United States. I said to her, the black people were the first proxy warriors. They were proxy warriors long before the Mujahideen were created in Afghanistan to drive the Russians out of Afghanistan. Okay. It's, it's, they it's were the first proxy warriors, and the natural inclination is to focus on black people and say, uh, I'm white and you're black, and there's a conflict because you're pushing me out of my neighborhood, and we're going to engage in this kind of struggle. What, what, what we need to do is step back from this conflict and say, who's orchestrating this? Okay, you mentioned that already. You know, you don't have a job, but you can go to the gay disco and forget about your troubles and dance away all your troubles. That's the social engineering. 
that's going on all across Europe. And Berlin is just a more advanced example of it than, let's say, Rome or other places, even Munich, for example. So you show up there and you're walking through the park and you think, you know, OK, this is where I've always walked through the park. And now I have these African drug dealers who are standing around in the park and I'm angry at what's going on. And so the natural inclination is to focus your anger on the African drug dealers. Well, I mean, first of all, they are, why are they there? They're there because of Hillary Clinton. They're there because Hillary Clinton destroyed Libya. So let's get real about what's going on here and focus on the, the, the source of the problem. First of all, it's Hillary Clinton who created the chaos in Libya that allowed the black people to jump across into Italy and move into Germany to destroy German culture. And the Germans need, they, they know that their culture is being destroyed. Whether they know who's responsible for it is another question. That was always the problem in the United States in the 60s. It's still the problem in the United States because you got all these people who were driven out of their neighborhoods, who used to be Polish, or Irish or Protestant or Scotch-Irish, and now they've lost all contact with their roots, which is going to happen, what happen, will happen to the <coughs> Albanians in Italy after a while, <coughs> and they don't know who they are. Yes, and so yes. they, they decide, well, I must be white because I look in the mirror and I'm not black. So therefore I must be white. And they identify with the commands of their oppressors and they end up with something like Charlottesville. I'm sure you, you remember what happened in Charlottesville, right? Yes, the, yes. How, how it's possible to fool people in such a, in such a uh, stupid way for all these years. And, and uh, uh, it, it, because... Uh, well, the answer to that question? The answer to the question is <laughs> control of information. Control yes. of information. Now, you can get all kinds of pornography on the internet, but you're not allowed to say the word do. That's the type of control of information that I'm talking about. Who controls what is acceptable speech and what is not acceptable speech? That is how you get people to, to do this, uh, do this to behave in ways that the oligarchs want you to behave. After they would be fooled and fooled and uh, all these years and, and, and they would fight with each other and everything, they should realize that uh, the only two categories that we have in this planet, in my opinion, uh, are, are you a prisoner? Or are you the guard, the people out of, of the prison that, that control you? There is, uh, we can say, for example, uh, there are believers in God and, and there are people uh, that, that don't believe in, in anything. And uh, the, the law of the strongest, you know, and, and so they believe in, in that stuff, in, uh, in evolution, in Darwinism and, and all this stuff. And uh, I mean, the people should start with this, at the top with these two categories. And then you can say, I'm Albanian, I'm uh, this kind of sheep, that kind of race of sheep, you know. But first of all, you are a sheep. And the sheep usually, uh, if it, it's isolated from, uh, from the, 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 the group of other sheep, it ends up, it ends up uh, dead from the wolves that, 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 that will eat it. So that's what they are doing with us. They isolate us with, with you know, with phones and culture and everything. Every, everybody stays, talks only, only to the screen today. They, they don't talk to each other. It's, they, they, it's hard for people to talk with each other because they are not used to it, you know? Right. Uh, they have relationship with, with screens today. Uh, not long ago, people had a relation with, with real people, with, with a woman, for example. And today they have a relation of, of two or, or maybe three minutes with a porn star, for example. And that's, that's the relation that, 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 that they have today. St. Saint Augustine said that there were two possibilities in human history, the city of God and the city of man. The city of God is the people who love God to the extinction of self, and the city of man is people who love self to the extinction of God. That, I think, I think he was right. Those are the only two options in human history, and you have to choose to belong to one or the other of those cities. 
the, the program for the city of God is love and service to your fellow man. The city of man is the opposite. What is the opposite of love and service? It's control and domination, or as Augustine would put it, libido dominandi, the dominating lust. What we've had over the period of the last 200 years in Europe and the United States is the development of more and more sophisticated forms of political control. So communism was in many ways a crude form of political control, and it failed, and everybody was happy when it failed, but it was replaced by a much more sophisticated form of political control. And this is the control that gets inside you by telling you that uh, if you become a slave of your passions, you're really being free. Well, they know that's not true, but that's the that's what people believe. And that's what they that's what happened to Italy and Germany during this period of time. When you walk out of the city of God, there's only one other city you can go to, and that's the city of man. There's no third option here. The result is demographic collapse. The result is weakness. And now they feel that immigration is going to finish off the last of their culture and they're not happy. And the problem is that they will oftentimes, as we did in, in Philadelphia, blame the proxy warriors instead of the people the proxy warriors are working for. That's the problem. And what we need is consciousness across the board uh, to allow people to understand who is really in charge and the plan they are using to enslave all of us. I mean, there is not much uh, time left, in my opinion. The guardian of freedom is morality. Now, of course. The first step, the first step you have to do if you want to be free is disconnect yourself from any type of immorality. And that means, for example, specifically something like pornography. Pornography is created uh, by the oligarchs to create a, a nation of uh, slaves. That's why it's there. That's why it's tolerated. No country in the world should tolerate pornography, but it's tolerated because it's a form of control. It's that simple. And so if anyone who's listening to us uh, wants to be free, you have to break that habit. You have to get rid of that habit. You know, uh, that's the beginning of freedom. Morality is the beginning of freedom. And then after you've got some type of control over your own life, maybe you can start connecting with other people who are in the same situation and form an organization or a group of people who believe the same thing and will not submit to this form of tyranny. That's what's got to happen. It's got to start with the individual who's got to be able to break away from all of the tools of enslavement that this culture has created. Yes, but it's it's but it's like you know you uh, you, you have some someone with uh, with problem with uh, bad problems of, of health, for example, and you you are telling them, or for example, one that smokes or is on drugs and uh, does all the unhealthy stuff, you uh, you want to help them, but uh, the you know it's it's hard to to tell them you know you should not eat the the, the candies and the, all this stuff that is making you uh ill but you should eat uh, this these fruits and vegetables you know for 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 at the beginning this uh, could not be seen uh, very well by them you know so uh, what i'm saying is that with pornography for example they they have destroyed the people in a way that it's it's uh, un, unbelievable for example for me true the, uh, it it was something uh, that uh, having been uh, when i was little here in italy uh, pornography was, was something uh, so normal you just switch on the tv and, and you see almost po pornography uh, today but uh, i the it was very late in, in uh, in my life that I had the power and uh, when I realized, for example, that I, it wasn't, uh, it, this was an attack on, on me and everything. And I imagine now, how, how, how could people in, the, in this age, for example, get out of it? And, if, and even if when you get out of it, this, this stuff will always be in your mind because it's like a trauma uh, that you have, that they have put in your mind and will never 
people that have lived through this hell with, with, with this all this pornography and everything this sick culture uh, all this stuff will be always in, in your mind and will uh, somehow will affect you for for the rest of our lives you need to make contact with these people you're living there you have to make contact with these people and explain to them what the situation is it's not me it's not albanians that are destroying your culture it's the united states or whatever i mean however you want to describe it it's the oligarchs for example the the youtube channel that, that i have uh, tries to deal only with these issues and i try to to make videos in english in uh, in italian of course the, the main videos the most most of these are, are in italian Uh, but the situation in Albanian also, but the situation is very, very sad because people, even if they saw a few minutes, they stopped the video because their brain is completely gone. They, 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 they it's, it's uh, the, the situation. It's, it's, it's really bad in my opinion. Uh, but, uh, but, but of course I, I will never, uh, in fact, I, uh, I didn't want to say this because I know that uh, I should be positive because being negative, it's, it's, it's useless. I mean, <laughs> uh, you, can't do this. you can't do this without God's help. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I, 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 I remember you said two options are the city of God and the city of man. And if you're a member of the city of God, you have to ask God for his help because otherwise there's, it's, it is hopeless without God. The situation is hopeless. Yes. Hey, Dr. Jones, uh, th thank you very much for, for your time. And uh, it, it was, uh, you know, I, I hope that uh, this other view of, of, uh, of my experience here in Italy maybe gave to, to, to this 5% of people that still have the brain uh, a, a way to, to, to decode, uh, to uh, decipher the, the world The, around us, hopefully. I hope so too. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Okay. I've enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. <laughs>